recently. And um, it is, for me, a very great pleasure to speak here. As my previous speakers have said, we are united by a crisis of development. And development which has alienated majority of people and the wilderness inequality across the world. First, let me start by saying that I came to the UN Climate Action Summit. I'm not used to coming to the UN General Assemblies because I realize that this is a jamboree. This is just a, 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 a ritual. Every year we come here, year in, year out, there is no action. So I thought that um, the Climate Action Summit would present something different. And I was determined to participate in it. But eventually what happened? I came, I applied as usual, and my, with my colleagues and some other very key Pan-African institutions, including the government, which has been mentioned here. <coughs> but once we arrived here, we just get a letter from UN. When we have arrived, they didn't even communicate to us, and then they tell us, we regret that we are not going to allow you in. You know, that is the kind of injustice perpetuated by a UN agency, which we are, we are, we are, we are looking upon to correct the old age inequalities and the injustices perpetrated over years to us, like those from the South. So really, so I, I stand here then to, to to say it's a, really a, a privilege that I would have gone home without having a and one in New York. <laughs> and so, I want to start then by asking myself, if a Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance, a, a very recognized organization, is denied access at the UN, what about small order permanent groups? What about small women groups at the local level? Those who have no voice, what about them? Will they ever, ever have voice there? Unless, of course, you are known to one of the UN agents, and then they can just hold you by the nose to come and read out a statement here, then that will be representation. I don't think that, that, that is what we are talking about in presentation. So, as we look at this crisis, then, how are we going to ad address it? Are we going to address it at the UN level? I believe the UN has failed completely. Even what we are doing here, even the declaration you are going to hear from heads of states, that I can assure you will end up nowhere. It will be just a ritual like any other, in my view. And so, to me, the answer remains with the people. I have participated in the UN climate change conference every year for the last 10 years. I've never missed even one. And which concluded, of course, with the UN uh, Paris Agreement. And then that was followed before that, three months earlier in September, that was uh, uh, preceded by the UN uh, 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 Agenda 2063. The question is, are you sure that we are going even to achieve at four years later? I'm not sure. I'm quite skeptical that we are going to achieve anything, even if we try, because it is the same system, there is no change, but every time they are talking about transformation, the language here will be, but what kind of transformation we are talking about? So there, that's the other question which I want to leave with you. Then the other, to, to me, this meeting is important in two ways. We have to look ourselves now, it is the time to look at ourselves and ask ourselves very critical questions. Where are we now? And are we moving to the right direction? And my answer is no. Why? We are looking, staring at the space being stolen by the right wing movement. It is growing. And what how happened? We lost that space. Then it's a case we have to uh, ask ourselves. The global divide is really expanding, manifested by the unprecedented 
takeover of the global affairs by extreme right, inward looking nationalist class of people driven by capitalism, imperialism, and sub imperialism in the South. And so, as a movement and those counting ourselves as civilized, we should ask ourselves how, for instance, and we have, as, as Panja, we have asked ourselves, how people like Trump, Donald Trump, he was here yesterday, you see, the contempt in which he is looking at ourselves. Nigel Farage from the UK, Boris Johnson, Maria Le Pen, have turned the global stage and overturning democratic gains a few over years. So this is the critical reflection we need to have here among ourselves. So to me, this assembly should be a reflection moment. So rather than wallowing in that maisma of deceit and blaming the right wing and the capitalism on our people, let's ask ourselves whether we are complicit in this trajectory. To us, as a movement, Perhaps have we become enemies of, of ourselves? One of the things is that while the right wing movement has been strategizing over years, united in its pursuit to overrun civilization, we, those who claim to stand for justice and civilization, have locked ourselves in our own cocoon, pointing spears to ourselves rather than the adversaries. We have turned against each other sometimes. And the spirit of solidarity is, our only, uh, is only in our lives. Indeed, most of us do exactly the opposite of what we profess. Negative competition has left a gap where the adversary has infiltrated us and injected the entire movement. So the question is, and this is the reflection which I made, is anti-slavery movement, the civil rights movement, the anti-colonial movement, anti-apartheid movement, and and democracy movement in Africa and elsewhere in the world. One, not because of the massive resources they got, not because of the many donors they have, but sheer commitment, trust building, and indeed organizing and outreach. So we lack these essential elements of movement building. And on the opposite, our enemies are becoming more and more organized and understand our weaknesses. So, as we set through on this, let me ask us all to take my words as a message of solidarity. We are not against anybody. But of course, a honest purview of how we see things as the largest climate movement in Africa. We believe in partnerships and look forward to complementing each other to strengthen ourselves as the only way to win those out there who may not have courage to question the status quo. So these are some of the ones. This is a reflection, and really we are very disappointed that uh, things are moving the way they are moving, but we hope we are going to move forward. It has never been difficult for the world now. It is difficult, but as the previous colleague has said, gender justice, climate justice, economic justice, at all levels, participatory justice, um, uh, 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 um, all these, we are going to achieve them if we are able to work together. So it is solidarity, solidarity, solidarity. And if we are ready to do that, let us build a movement. And we will overrun Trump as his allies, even here. He will never step here again. Thank you very much. <laughs>